Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another video on the VSET and the Zero tutorial. So today, we'll be touching on error codes generally. Uh, there are different uh, kind of error codes. Uh, I'll be touching generally four or five of them. Alright, uh, first one will be the error code number six, which is the battery's under voltage. Uh, error code number seven, which is uh, the motor itself. Uh, error code number 8, which is your throttle, your turnstile fault. Alright, error code number 9 will be controller itself. Okay, for error code number 10 and 11, it's basically your main wire harness, your transmission and your receiving. Okay, so before I continue, uh, do take a moment, like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting uh, videos and tutorials given by us. And these are just a few of the many error codes that I'll be showing you. For a full list of error codes, do check out on the link given below. Okay, let's start out. I will not be doing it in any order. I'll be doing it uh, from the most difficult to the most simplest. The first error code will be error code number... Let me see. Error code number 7. Alright, your motors. So what can we do about it? It's actually very simple. You definitely have to gain access to your deck. You have to remove your deck. Take a size number 3, Allen key. As such, undo all the bolts that's holding on to your deck itself. Once you figure that out, remove it. Okay, note for the V set, the charging port is on top. You have to undo it like this. Okay, for the motors, it's actually very simple. Both the zeros and the V set will come with this sponge covering everything. You just have to take note on two different things. The face wires, make sure the connections are in as such. If you're not sure, just unplug and for good measure of yourself, plug it in back full. The second thing to take note is your hole sensor, which looks exactly like this. Same thing, all the way in, as such. And turn on your scooter and see whether it rectifies the problem. If it doesn't, you have to check all the way through, thread through all your motor wires. If you have dual motor, the front and the rear. So you have a couple of this. So what are you supposed to check? Okay, for the connections, the connections if, if they are okay, you have to check whether your wires are stuck together or not. You no, know, in case where you know heavier riders, you have to make sure these wires are intact and not glued together. Alright, the reason why it's glued together is because, you know, current produces heat and, you know, so on and so forth. Okay. okay, once you rectify the wires, the face and hole is okay. The connections are all okay. Next, you want to do, before you turn on your scooter, of course, is to check whether there is resistance on your motor itself. This is, there's no resistance on this. If, let's say, there's a resistance, it will be, you know, you can feel a certain magnetic resistance as such. I'm just simulating it. Alright? Okay, once you have rectified the problem, there is no resistance, you're good to go, turn it on and ride free. If not, if there's still a resistance, remove all connections entirely, man mainly the hall and face. Just remove that. Okay, sure, as, sure. as such. And your hall. Alright. From here, all your connections are removed. You usually will not have any resistance anymore okay if you do you might as well just change out the motor okay once you have removed your connect your motor connections entirely okay you have to make sure your motors can turn free as such if let's say you still have a resistance here a magnetic resistance i'm just simulating it again for you okay you might have a burn or a shock along the lines of your hall and face wires now we can't determine where and when this this will be so what you can do is two things I would just cut it out and change a whole new wire by itself or normal people would just remove it entirely replace the motors if let's say you do not have a shot anywhere along the lines here or you do not visually see there will be there will be a shot inside the motor so uh, that's a surefire way to just change it up immediately. 
Okay, for those of you who have the dual motor versions of the Zeros and the V set, okay, so you not sure which motors or controllers are faulty in the man in, in, in that case, right? What you can do is that's why I did unplug. Okay, for dual motors, alright, attention here, it will be from where you have default remove this, switch out to another connection for the front, say for example. This is another connection, just plug it in and determine whether is it the front or the rear. If it's the rear, you just swap the connections. And that's how you determine whether your front or rear motor is faulty. Okay, the next error code will be, let me check for you. Next error code would be uh, error code number 9, which is your controller. Okay, for controller, what... I would personally suggest to you if, if an error code 9 comes on, alright, I would just entirely change the controller. The controller, I mean the error code number 9 arises mainly because of a few things. Uh, you may have ridden your scooter a bit too hard or too harsh. Or perhaps um, water got into your controller and shorted everything up. Or maybe your transistors, your MOSFETs burn or a capacitor just blew. So, um, there is no quick fix to that, so the best way is just to change out your controller entirely and perhaps you have time, you can always just remove the controller and see what happens inside. Next, I'll be touching on your wire harness. In any case where you see your LCD shows itself error 10 or error 11, alright? Error 10 would be your transmission fault, error 11 would be your uh, receiving fault. Uh, how users experience this generally is basically your scooter is turned on, moving well this way, but as you turn to the left or right, it doesn't move. See, moving and it doesn't move. So that is a sign of an intermittent, intermittent connection of your wire harness. So what will you do? Remove the wire harness entirely, remove and change to a new wire harness, both for the zero and the V-set. Okay. So both of these errors come down to the same thing, your wire harness. What to look out for your wire harness is actually very simple, three different steps. All right. First step, uh, gain access to your deck. You have to do some digging. All right. And you will see, let me dig for you. Is it hiding somewhere? Yeah, it's hiding somewhere. Okay, I saw it. Okay, we just advise them to remove the controller. Okay. So, your wire harness will look something like this. Alright, for the zeros and the V sets, it's definitely hidden all the way underneath. So, the best thing to do, the most easiest way to do it, is to just remove your controller entirely. Alright, so you'll be looking at this waterproof connection. Okay, make sure this is connected correctly. Oh. So for the V-sets, it will be this uh, round waterproof connections. Okay, for the zero users, you'll be uh, looking at a connector that is something like this, but slightly bigger. This is the Molex 5-pin connection. Of course, this is a 2-pin. Okay, make sure that connection is sealed tightly. And that's one. The second thing to determine error code uh, number 10 and 11 is all the way up to your dashboard this area okay the second thing to look out for is this connection which is your LCD down all the way right, so this one have to be shut tight if it doesn't definitely the error code comes up also another thing to take note for the zero users especially okay, because it's uh, on a Molex connection Certain connections out of the five or six wires, the connections are up. You have to use a sharp needle. For me, I use a sharp pin. Push it back in and make sure everything is all inside the connection. Inside the connector, I mean. Yeah. For the V-set, you don't, you don't have a problem. It's this uh, waterproof connector. This is, as you can see, it's very tight. You will not get it wrong when you connect this. 
Next we'll be touching on uh, error code number 6 which is uh, batteries under voltage. All right. So uh, when you experience battery under voltage, or under voltage which is uh, error 6 on your LCD, uh, mainly it is trying to tell you that uh, you have a mismatch controller, a mismatch uh, LCD reading or even the LCD itself all right, or a battery failure which is the worst case scenario. So uh, what you want to do is uh, to check on a few things uh, mainly you have to go to your LCD definitely turn it on uh, and adjust your P settings and I'll bring you there for the VSET users I already turn it on these two buttons simultaneously press and uh, you will okay, let me do from the start P number 3 all right, would be 52 volts. Okay, this 52 volt reading is per your current uh, battery's uh, spec. Say for example, you have uh, you bought a 48 volt scooter, so that will show 48. If let's say you bought a 60 volt scooter, it will show 60 volts, so on and so forth. So make sure the P number three is in accordance to your current battery's voltage, and then we'll jog up. To P15. Okay, P15. A little, a little thing to take note is that this is the battery's uh, cutoff value. Of course, different scooters, different controllers even have a different cutoff uh, minimum cutoff value. All right. Say if you have a uh, 48 volt. All right. Uh, best is to follow your controller's cutoff value. I'll bring one controller to show. Okay, say for example, this is the controllers that you have. All right, this is the zero. zero. This is the zero controllers. All right, this is a fifty-two volt controller. If you're not sure what's the cutoff value, you can just follow here the offset cutoff voltage at forty-two. Set P fifteen to forty-two. I'll give you another example. I'll take another controller. Okay, what you're looking at is the 10x controller, the zero 10x. Uh, this is running on a 60 volt. All right, what is the cutoff value? You're not so sure. The value is here. So just follow the cutoff value for P15 and match it here and in accordance to your whole machine. All right. So there's no mismatch whatsoever. Well, if you encounter the worst case scenario, okay. Everything is all in order, readings are the same, everything, you know, all fine and dandy. So, you doesn't rectify the problem. What you can do is remove the battery. If you have a multimeter, you can just probe it. So, if, let's say you have an error code number 6 and everything is, reading is all in accordance with, everything tallies, everything matches, right? So, what you can do is, uh, before you remove or even touch the battery itself, right? You have, you have your charger, plug it in, if it charges, then it's fine. Do two full charge cycles, which what I mean by that is, charge it once, discharge it once, see if the problem occurs. If it doesn't, do a second one, charge it once, full. And discharge it once more, and see if the problem occurs. So once you have done your two full charge cycles, like as per mentioned, and the error code still comes on, what you can do is, there may be a failure in the controller itself, a short of some kind. You can always just change out the controller unit itself. Like for dual motors, that means dual, both of the controllers itself. Yeah. The last one we'll be touching on is the error code number 8, which is uh, the turnstile uh, fault. I would like to name it the throttle itself. All right. There's an error in the throttle itself. So what you do is, for zero and reset users, same thing. Size three Allen key. Loosen the screws as such. Okay. You may want to access. Are you gonna remove the whole throttle? No, no. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it around. Okay. 
you turn it around and you have to remove the back panel for the zero users is the same thing remove the back panel and of course you have to have additional size 2.5 to remove this piece okay Philips head this screw of all the screws will be slightly tighter because this holds everything down very gently lift it up now don't let your screws drop in here or it will short any of these connections down here unplug everything So what this turnstile fault is actually, it's very simple, you have to check your magnet and your magnet sensor are intact and not broken, especially the sensor, because the sensor has three legs on it, all the three legs must be intact, okay, for zero users, the most common problem is not the sensor itself, is the this lever itself, this the magnet. turning lever which is also the magnet. So what you can do is make sure the spring on this on, on the underside of this lever, or if you were to look at here, is already open. There's a spring underneath here. Make sure it sits nicely and correctly so that it will have this effect the magnet is here okay. the magnet usually will run out of place and not have the sensor to read the magnet and that will show the error code okay. and once that's done just put it back in plug it back in and I hope I have solved most, if not all of your error code issues. And uh, of course, if you have not already, do click like and subscribe in our YouTube channel for more tutorials and interesting videos. If, let's say, the error codes that you face aren't in the tutorial, just do leave us a comment and we will follow up very shortly. We hope you found this video helpful. Do subscribe to our channel in the link given below for more updates on the VSET and the Zeros in the future.